Space FPGAs were built by Intel. So, yes. <laughs> so uh, go this ahead. was a big surprise, and you know, uh, Altair is a little late to the uh, ARM-based FPGA market. Uh, Xilinx has been shipping uh, FPGAs with ARM Cortex A9s, 32-bit uh, ARM cores, uh, for the past year, maybe even 18 months. So they are doing well, but they're using a TSMC process for their devices. Now, it was well known that Intel would be manufacturing Altera's FPGAs on a 22 nanometer process uh, starting in a, you know, sometime next year. Uh, but the surprise that with today was those 22 nanometer FPGAs coming out of an Intel fab are going to have ARM Cortex A53s, I think four of them, uh, on the chip, which means uh, an Intel factory will be turning out ARM uh, processor cores. Now, in the past, Intel had said they did not want to manufacture chips that had competing processor cores in them. Uh, however, uh, it really came down to Intel saying, we don't want to make chips for competitors that could be used in lieu of an Intel chip. So, for example, a Qualcomm Snapdragon that competed with an Intel uh, Bay Trail or a Bay Trail SOC, uh, they wouldn't make that. But clearly, Intel's not in the FPGA business, and they do want foundry partners because they have a lot of big factories and they need to keep those factories as filled as possible. So uh, the Altera arrangement makes a lot of sense, and when they get those chips, it'll give Altera potentially a competitive advantage over Xilinx, their key rival in that market segment. But I think even more interestingly, Intel has, re has changed uh, its posture toward making chips that might compete with its own. And this is not broadly known, but they, do have, they have shared that with me, and they said I could even talk about it. So basically, Intel now says if a, somebody who, with whom they compete, or who makes, say, an ARM-based SOC, wants to use Intel's manufacturing technology uh, and is willing to pay a fair dollar for it, you know, TSMC can charge a, a good price for the latest tech, and they charge very commodity prices for processes that are three or four years old. But if you are somebody who wants to make a chip, even if it competes with an Intel Atom chip, uh, or an Intel Haswell chip, using an ARM core, or a MIPS core, or somebody else's core, Intel now says that they would be willing to negotiate and work with you on that. So that's, a, that's an interesting change that Brian Krasinich has implemented since he became CEO, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out over the next couple of years. It is huge, and I think what it says is Intel understands that it has several things, several strengths as a company. One of its strengths is its ability to design really neat x86 microprocessors. Another strength, huge strength, is its manufacturing prowess. And in the past, they've tied those two together. And Paul Odellini used to say that he would prefer to collect rent on the x86 design and on the manufacturing prowess. But the fact is, you can make a pretty good penny if you manufacture wafers, uh, especially using leading edge processes, because there are companies who will pay dearly to get that technology. And so as a way for Intel to augment its business uh, by dropping that we won't make things that compete with us clause, uh, they are potentially expanding uh, the market they serve. But is it also admitting that the x86 business is, you know, slowing and... You have to be uh, putting your head in the sand to not recognize that the x86 market doesn't have the same kind of growth potential uh, that it had 
five or six years ago that tablets and smartphones uh, have now come on the scene. Intel's not a big player there. They'd still like to be a big player there. But meanwhile, they can participate in that market segment uh, and make good money by using by leveraging their manufacturing prowess. So I think it's a clever move on their part. And it will be interesting to see whether they can persuade companies with whom they compete uh, to work with them uh, and with, as a, in a manufacturing relationship. That's not a slam dunk. Uh, arm, arm, uh, you know, having Intel as a partner, that's a... Uh... Well, you know, it, that, that would certainly be a press release that would knock my socks off. Arm and tapes out a prototypical, you know, 64-bit core using Intel's 14 nanometer FinFET technology. Now that would, that would certainly get people talking. Um, but then the, the other issue is, will companies like Qualcomm, Broadcom, NVIDIA, who have fought head-to-head -head with Intel, be willing to enter into arrangements where Intel is their manufacturing partner? Uh, that, I think, remains to be seen. But it, it certainly is a new element in the industry and you know we've often talked about coopetition right companies cooperate and they compete uh, and I think this would be an excellent example of that kind of uh, arrangement in coming to coming into fruition thank you Nathan